I'm an old school kind of guy, and nothing brings me more joy than going back and revisiting the original Dragon Ball series. Of course, I do tend to do this every five to six years because I hit an existential life crisis that I just can't solve, and I figure instead of just jumping off of a bridge, I will just go back and relive my childhood watching all through the Dragon Ball franchise. But of course, I go back to the very original... Dragon Ball anime, the 153 episode original adaptation of Akira Toriyama's manga, back before transformations, back before universe destroying power ups, and at a time where the characters felt like anybody in the world could have something to offer as far as training or being stronger than them, or showing them something to adventure to, or strive towards, or a new edition of magic, or any of the crazy things that happen within the original Dragon Ball that make just one world not not the universe, not multiple galaxies, but just one planet feels so miraculous and wide open that there could be anything out there if we just go out and explore it. I think Dragon Ball has truly stood the test of time for many reasons, but not the least of which is just how pure and passionate this original series feels, which is even funnier when you think about the fact that Toriyama kind of originally started it just as a quick manga that he was going to write with a lot of humor in it before moving on to the next thing, and then it all of a sudden became an all-consuming masterpiece. It all starts out with just a boy living in the woods, Goku, and he stumbles across Bulma, who is on the search for the seven magical Dragon Balls. Once assembled, you can summon an eternal dragon that will grant you any wish. And part of the joy of this series is seeing Goku step beyond his original boundaries of living in the woods and slowly discovering the world. I love how naive and pure he is in the sense that he just wants to have fun and get stronger, and I think that there's something that we can learn from Goku because of that. It's like every other character around him is so superficial and they just want things, or they get easily agitated, or they have ulterior motives, or they're dirty-minded, or whatever the case may be, but Goku just stands above the rest just by simply wanting to be better, wanting to get stronger wanting to experience as much as he can. And there is that purity within that that I think is truly special and something that makes this series stand out. Something a lot of other series have copied and built off of along the way. People often say Goku is a stupid character, and I mean that mentally, but it's him not caring about social norms or the way that things are supposed to be laid out and instead just being purely him. I like that in the beginning that he doesn't even understand the difference between boys and girls and so he starts patting people on the crotch to find out because he finds out that's the difference. But the humor comes from the fact that Goku doesn't even understand that what he's doing is inappropriate. He's just curious. And throughout the course of the series, he does learn and he does grow and he does uh, mature as a person. And you actually get to see him grow up, which is another great thing about it, is because Goku begins the series at around 11 or 12 years old. And when Dragon Ball ends, he's 18. You get to see him learn his limitations. You get to see him learn restraint. You get to see him learn that extra kindness that he incorporates. You get to see him become a good leader over time. You get to see him become stronger. And through each new training segment, he learns a little bit more of how to become a better person, ultimately culminating in him becoming the world's martial arts champion at the end of the series. Dragon Ball makes its world feel wondrous. It's full of magic, mythical creatures, incredible technology. There's landscapes and wilderness and the mountainside and the cities and everything about it just feels like it just grows and grows and grows. And it does a great job at capturing that spirit of adventure whenever Goku is in a new location. But not only that, but it also has a heavy emphasis on martial arts. And with martial arts, you get that emphasis of learning discipline, learning to become stronger, bettering yourself, and also meeting and engaging with a lot of different people in the process. One of my favorite things about the original Dragon Ball is the martial arts tournaments, of which there are three in the series, and each time the characters go there, you get to explore a little bit more about the world around them. You get this anticipation of them training to get there. You get the arrival. You get the preliminary matches where almost any of these characters has the potential to be stronger than our main characters. Or you get to see how much stronger our main characters have become within the last three years by how they fare up against these people in the preliminaries. 
But you also get the ridiculous humor and over-the-top scenes. It's so crazy to think that the beginning of Dragon Ball would eventually become what the end of Dragon Ball and what Dragon Ball Z is because the beginning of Dragon Ball is so focused on the hilarity and the humor and it's pretty much just a joke and gag series at that point, which makes sense because Toriyama came from that background. Starting with my favorite character, Master Roshi, a master of martial arts and becomes Goku's first real trainer. And this guy has so many great hilarious scenes within this series that it just cracks me up. It's humor that would not fly today. It's raunchy. It's dirty. It's an old man looking at dirty magazines and trying to look at Bulma's panties. But my God, if I don't laugh every single time. And you know what? The thing about it is that makes it funny. Not only is it just over the top and exaggerated, so it's not meant to be taken seriously, number one. But number two is that Roshi never succeeds in these endeavors. Whenever he tries to be over the top and dirty and get a glimpse at these chicks panties or shrink down to look at Palma in the bathroom or whatever he does he always gets his punishment for it he always gets beat over the head he always gets shot by launch like something bad always happens every time he tries to act on that indulgence so he never gets rewarded for these actions so I think these humorous scenes are great I don't think many of them would fly today I know there is a lot of perverted humor in anime but for some reason the Master Roshi ones just feel very much like a prize product of their time, but I kind of value and appreciate them even more because of that. I guess I can still try with their human hair. And as the series goes on, it does get a little bit more serious. But the stakes raise periodically as the show goes on. The Red Ribbon Army arc is one of the most memorable in the series because they are a ruthless organization that use all of this advanced technology. They have a ton of strong fighters within their forces. But at the same time, the reason they want the Dragon Balls is because their commander, Commander Red, wants to wish to be taller. And I kind of I kind of get that as a 5'5 five five dude, yeah. And then once you get to later in the series and you get to the Piccolo arc, which has a bunch of different themes of redemption for Tian Shinhan or the sacrifice that Master Roshi makes, but the Piccolo arc is really, really interesting because it kind of sets the template for everything that Dragon Ball would eventually become. Because even though the Red Ribbon Army was a threat and they had some strong characters, uh, Mercenary Tao was probably the strongest that Goku fought up until that point. But once it gets to the King Piccolo arc, he really kind of represents what Dragon Ball Z eventually is with a really strong, powerful antagonist that kind of comes in, takes over, and the characters have to train, get stronger in order to defeat them. The martial arts tournaments don't really work that way. They do have antagonists, but they're set up as in a bracket format, and, you know, there's no killing involved. It's not like this fate of mankind kind of thing, but when it gets to Piccolo, it is. And I will say that the Piccolo arc isn't as strong as, like, Frieza, Cell, or Boo is later on, but I, I do really appreciate it by the very fact that it sets the template of what Dragon Ball Z would eventually become. And there are so many great side characters here that get a lot to do as well, and maybe characters that you want to go back and rewatch Dragon Ball to get more of if you've only been a fan of Dragon Ball Z and the future animes. You have a lot that comes out of Krillin and his dynamic with Goku and kind of trying to keep up with him along the way, with Yamcha and going from being a desert bandit to uh, eventually kind of training with Roshi himself, having a great fight with Tien in the second tournament of the series. And of course, I want to talk about Tien himself because Tien has always been one of my favorites, but in Dragon Ball specifically, you get a lot of development from Tien, and I think it's really important to go back and see where he came from. Comes from a rival school of Goku's, uh, of Master Roshi, and he puts on this persona of being this tough kind of bully, douchebag type character, but that's not really truly who he is. He's trying to live up to the expectations of Mercenary Tao and of his master, and it's through his fight with Jackie Chun, which I wonder who Jackie Chun is, because uh, I don't know, man. He's only in these tournaments and he never shows up again. I mean, I know he looks a little bit like Roshi, but obviously Roshi's bald and Jackie Chun has hair, so I don't know who Jackie Chun is. But anyways, during their fight, I think it's one of my favorites. And also that tournament in particular, I think, is where the fight scenes get a lot more intense. The early fight scenes in Dragon Ball are pretty silly, pretty humor-based. But by the 22nd tournament, the one that Tien is first featured in, his fight with Yamcha lets you know right off the bat that the fight scenes are getting more in-depth, more complicated. And it's also fun to see how it progresses because you notice little things, especially if you come from watching Dragon Ball Z first, because you notice, like, what's the first time somebody 
somebody uses an energy attack. Okay, it's Kamehameha. When's the first time somebody screams to power up? Okay, it's in the Piccolo arc. It's interesting to see these things kind of come to be. And I just love Goku as a kid. I love seeing him as a character, and I love watching him grow up. I love his training with Mr. Popo and Kami towards the end of the series because it's a lot of a focus on being able to sense energy, being able to move with an instinct, being able to assess the situation around you. All of those things come towards the end of the series. Not to mention it culminates with the eventual Piccolo that we would know from Dragon Ball Z. This version of Piccolo is one of the best, and the tournament with him is... a incredible way to close out the series and i honestly think that this fight between goku and piccolo is one of the best fights in the entire dragon ball franchise like top three for sure if you haven't ever watched the original dragon ball anime it's worth it alone for this fight but i also like how it comes full circle because goku in the beginning of the series you know there's so many characters that are stronger than him and there's three different tournaments and goku never wins until the final tournament and also the final tournament features characters from throughout the whole series they bring chi chi back they bring mercenary tao from the red ribbon army arc tian and goku get a rematch and of course we have piccolo which relates to the piccolo arc and everything kind of comes full circle and the series finishes with goku becoming the world's martial arts champion and it's such a fitting end even though it's not nearly the end because we go on to dbz and beyond but if you just watch dragon ball as its own series I think that it wraps up very nicely. There are a couple of filler episodes at the very end which feature Goku and Chi-Chi going on a little adventure together, but I love that too because like eventually Chi-Chi just gets portrayed as like a gigantic raging bitch, but in Dragon Ball, even though she's got some anger tendencies, I love this moment with Goku and Chi-Chi because it really just kind of shows them hanging out together and I don't know, something about it I appreciate. Also, the final tournament version of Chi-Chi is, uh, is where it's at, I'm just saying. But anyways, guys, I just finished rewatching the original Dragon Ball anime, and I just had to gush about it because I think it's truly brilliant. And if you haven't gone back and watched original Dragon Ball, I highly, highly recommend that you do so. If you have seen the original Dragon Ball series, which I'm sure a bunch of you have, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. What was your favorite arc? What's your favorite thing about the series? Favorite aspect? Let me know all that down below. Uh, other than that, guys, thanks for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up and a comment to help it in the algorithm. And if you want to, you can check the links in my description to help the channel out. I have a Patreon, channel memberships, merch store, and all the social media links where you can follow me. Other than that, guys, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll talk to you next time. What do I care about seeing your dirty old fanny?